This is part four of Yahweh Ben Yahweh, an ensign for the nations, by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wavhe, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. How do we love Yahweh? And how do we love our brothers and sisters? Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. What is our motto? Our motto is one God, one mind, one love, and one action. We are all for one. And one for all. And we want for our brothers and sisters. But we want for ourselves. What about soup? If I have a bowl of soup, you may have half my bowl of soup. Do you mean that? You have to have an awful lot of love for Yahweh when you be hungry and talk about sharing half your bowl. What is the duty of a Hebrew man? What is the duty of a Hebrew woman? And if either turns from the law, praise Yahweh. You may be seated. Welcome to International Headquarters for the Nation of Yahweh, the tribe of Judah, Hebrew Israelites, children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Welcome. It is here that the so-called black man of America learns his identity and solves his identity crisis as to just who am I, what nation am I from? What land do I own? What was my name before being brought to America? What was my name before we were made slaves? For 310 years, before our name was taken from us, what was that name? It is here that you learn the truth about your history, which allows you to take your rightful place under the sun. It's here that we learn our nationality as Hebrew Israelites. We are the people of the Bible. When you read about Israel in the Bible, you're reading about the history of the black man of America. We are one tribe, and there are 12. We are the tribe of Judah. What's so important about Judah? We were chosen to be the ruler. We're the heads, chosen to be the ruler of the earth forever. divinely chosen by the creator. No one can prevent me from bringing you into world rulership forever. I make my announcement boldly, openly, without charge of conspiracy. It's not about taking over America, it's about taking our place as rulers of the planet Earth. It is the Bible that tells us our history and why we are in the condition we are in today here in America. Hebrew is our history, Hebrew is our culture, Hebrew is our language. Our common last name as a family is Israel, Yisrael. And we were given a land through our patriarchal father, Abraham. All of North Africa, a tiny part of which is called Israel today. There's war in the east, war all over the earth, because the black man of America has not accepted his God, who is the creator of all things. Yahweh is his name. There will be no peace on the earth until we, the so-called blacks of America, return to our Father, Yahweh, and obey his will. It is not that the white man or any other man has the power to punish you, as it is Yahweh uses them to punish us for not obeying his will. 
So there's no need to be angry with white folks or any other nation that beats up on you. You deserve to be whipped, and that's why Yahweh is whipping you. You deserve it for turning your back on Yahweh and not keeping his law. And every time you break Yahweh's law and something happens, you stub your toe and you hit your head up against something, you need that knot on your head. Sometimes if there's nobody else to hit you, you'll just hit your own head up against something. That's a reminder, you old hard-headed person. You. Truth will save you. The truth will set you free. I want to testify to you that Yahweh is the only sovereign one. Some say God, you know, he's the only God. All by myself, I stretch forth the heavens. That's Yahweh talking. I did it all alone, no help. All by myself, I stretched forth the heavens. I conceived it in my mind and said, let it be, and there was nothing to withhold it from becoming. <laughs> Yahweh, the sovereign, the only God, and I am his only begotten son. My name is Yahweh ben Yahweh. I come in the name of my Father. All the work that I do is in the name of my Father. If my body were to disappear instantly, right this second, then all the glorious work that I have done goes to my Father's name, Yahweh. That makes me the most unselfish man on the earth. That makes me the most humble man on the planet. Because every other man seeks to build a name for himself. Men want others to bow down to them as if they are God. So they seek to establish a great name for themselves to be remembered. But I'm happy to cause the world to look at me. I am not a genius, but I'm the genius. The only genius. Praise God. I came to Miami all by myself. I was by, I didn't fear coming by myself. I was by myself when I made everything. I was by myself from the beginning, so I didn't have a problem coming to Miami by myself. And I said, I will conquer the world from Miami. I will cause the world to bow and every tongue to confess and every knee to bow that Yahweh is God. And all by myself, I have the world saying what they said was ineffable unpronounceable unspeakable I have the world see they have to say it just to talk to me you have to call you have to call on this unknown name this unspeakable name just to talk about me I force my enemies to make their tongue say Yahweh and the pen to write Yahweh just to say something negative about me, you have to bear witness to my father's name. I make you do that. You don't have any power against that. You cannot think about me without thinking about my father's name. That's power. In every state, in the, all the Caribbean islands, and across America and the world, I have everybody thinking on the name yes, sir. Yahweh. Yes, sir. I'm the son of Yahweh. Yes, I don't care who is the son of who. Yes, 
I'm telling you who I'm the son of. And I don't care what your God is and what the name is, I don't care about that. I'm not concerned about that. All I know is I'm here to tell you that any God that didn't make these heavens got to go. He shall perish. And the one that made the heavens has the power to chase every other pretender out from under the heavens. So I stand before the world with my message. Stop me if you can. That's what I love about Yahweh. He's not a background God. He's not a conspiratorial God. He doesn't hide behind bushes. He says whatever he's going to do, he writes it down. And, and then he proclaims it in the midst of the polytheists. And though the polytheists be great and adverse and, and multitudinous in number, though the whole world stood against me, I came saying I challenge the planet. I didn't get brave like this and courageous like this because huge numbers are behind me now. I was like this from the beginning because I knew who was with me from the beginning. <laughs> Yahweh is his name. He is sovereign, the absolute sovereign, the only God. I am his son. Yahweh ben Yahweh is my name. My father and I have the same name. To call my name, you have to call my father's name twice. Because I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. The son of Yahweh. I am Yahweh in the flesh as the son. My mission on earth I am come to give all of you power that you don't have on your own and you can't read up on it you can't luck up on it you can't wish up on it I am the only one that is come and will ever come to give you power to become the sons <coughs> of Yahweh and if you receive me and believe on my name I will give you eternal life you will live forever even if a man can kill your body don't be afraid of it don't be afraid yeah. see if you're afraid of a man that can kill your body you become bound you become bound to that man. You, 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 you act as if he's God. Don't fear no man. Don't fear that. Don't, don't, no, 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 no. no the, see, it's not about your body. You have a soul, one ten thousand part, you know, the one ten thousand part of the tipping of your hair. It, it's so infinitesimal that no man can see it, touch it, or harm it, or hurt it. I control that. Fear Yahweh who can cast both your body and soul in the head. Then you're a free man. Some people have said, well, aren't you afraid of, of the white man? No. You can't kill God. I walk with Enoch. I walked in the garden with Adam in the cool of the evening. Abraham was my friend. I let Moses see my glory in the cleft of the rock. I talked to him on the mountain. I even made an agreement with you as my Horeb, all of you that are alive here this day. I'm still walking. A man has no power over your soul. Know that. We are proof of that. 
Romans killed millions of, millions of us in 70 AD when we fled Jerusalem, destroyed our city. The Romans that killed us are dead. Where are they? We're here. All nations that tried to kill us all are gone. They don't have a kingdom. But we're here, and you're with the king, our king, building a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The men that put us in slavery are dead. But here we are free in Yahweh. All power is in Yahweh. See, I could just sit down now because that's my message. That's all you need. What more do you need than eternity? Especially to be in heaven forever. Well, tonight we are in Feast of Tabernacles 88. Welcome. We covered some very important information last night. We covered some very beautiful scriptures relative to our duties and responsibilities regarding Feast of Tabernacles. We will learn a little bit more tonight about the history of the Tabernacles and why, and why we keep it even today and forever. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 1, verse 14. Now since solar time is decreed by Yahweh, and I come to set it back in motion, what happened to them? They, see, they sought to change the time. Daniel 725. I'm coming back to Isaiah. Don't worry. Don't fret. Daniel what? 725. 725. See, the devil has nerve. He, he has nerve to speak great words against the Most High, Yahweh. I mean, he just does. He's the devil writes great words against me in newspapers. Mm-hmm. And they only want to wear out the saints. What saints? Saints of the Most High Yahweh. And the saints of Yahweh are given into the hand of Satan until a time and times and the dividing of time. Limited amount of time here. This signals three and a half years, but time, time and a half. But the judgment shall sit. Hmm? And the saints of Yahweh will take away his rulership, consume him, and destroy his rulership until the very end. Now I want the scripture which says he changed. That's right there, isn't it? Yes, sir. He saw it in verse 25 to do what? To change the times and the laws of Yahweh. So though Yahweh said, don't eat pork, don't eat swine and pig, they put it all in the, the stores and restaurants and then they tell you it's nutritional. Now how can something that will cause your skin to break out and give you cancer and tumors be nutritional? When you eat pig, you begin to get ugly. It's just a matter of time. You start squaring up. Your hips start stiffening up. You're not able to walk as fast or as free as you used to. Your joints start hurting. That's that old pig. Shrimp. Lobster. Crab. Cunt and stuff. See, you've been eating the wrong stuff. Now, 
But they have changed the times, the calendars of Yahweh. Now we can go back to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 14. So here you have Yahweh laid down the law in Genesis chapter 1 that the sun ruled the day. Genesis 1.16. Genesis 1 what? 16. 1.16. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. Wait a minute. Verse 14. Read. And Yahweh said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Yahweh didn't stop there and leave you the freedom to choose which one rules. The calendar. Verse 16. Read. And Yahweh made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So anybody following the lesser light has the lesser wisdom. The moon rules darkness. Only the sun is sovereign. Only the sun, by being ruler of the day, can show you your way. Nighttime is a time to sleep. Without the light of the sun, see the moon is not sovereign. It is dependent. See the moon can't be a, a true ruler because it's not an independent light source. The moon of itself is in darkness without the sun. The moon is but a reflection of the sun that is self-luminous. So that tells us who the absolute ruler is. If the sun goes out, the moon is through. So no wise God would use the moon to determine times and seasons as rulership. Its rulership is a subordinate rulership, a dependent rulership. You can plant at certain times of the moon and not have crops grow like they should. But it won't grow at all without the sun. See, the moon has to complement the sun's rulership. That's why when you have to plan on a certain sign of the moon, it has to wait on the sun to determine things. Because the seeds won't grow under the moonlight. They're not going to germinate under moonlight only. The moon is a barren piece of earth without water, without life. So now you're ready to turn back to Isaiah chapter 1. So I give you a little background. A little scriptural background. That's why when they ask us, are you Jewish? No, I'm Hebrew Israelite. Besides, there was no letter from the beginning in Hebrew language and there's no letter J from the beginning to this day in the Hebrew language. So how can I be Jewish? and be Hebrew. No, Hebrew, Israelite. Do you believe in Judaism? No. See, let me tell you, it's not about Judaism and religions, it's about Yahweh being sovereign. And Yahweh being Yahweh is his only begotten sovereign son who has the power to give you life eternal. Judaism is, a, is the tradition of men. And they have you, they have obviously changed the law. Because they're following the tradition of men 
which is under a changed law, so the Jew couldn't have the light. Because they go by lunar reflection. Now I'm here. Set the record straight. And I want you to know, you can read with me if you want to. You can look at this if you want to, but your new moons and your appointed feasts according to the new moon, my soul hates. Your new moons and your appointed feasts according to the moons trouble me. And I'm tired, I'm wearied of carrying allowing these lies to exist. For you men, by your tradition, seek to make the laws of Yahweh of none effect. And that's why when we celebrate our high holy days, they don't fall at the same time that Jews fall. They come after us. See, their atonement just went down three days ago. Ours went down a week ago. See, we the leader. That makes us the leader. Because we are first in the sun. Under the sun. With the sun. See, when you follow the sun, you be first in everything. Incredible. Now, how many are ready to go solar time? That's Yahweh's time. Logic says you'll be dumb to follow darkness. Dark rulership. Lunar time is dark time. Dependent time. As long as you believe in a lunar calendar, you are dependent people. You're very predictable. You look to other nations to establish your well-being, your welfare. It's a pitiful, a dependent person is a pitiful person. Sad person. When you depend on someone other than Yahweh, you have serious trouble in yourself, in your home, with your family, in your community, in your country, on the entire planet Earth. Problem. When you depend on someone other than Yahweh. 